let's turn this spare classroom into a celestial sphere. I've got my posters, I've got the instructions, and the months. All I need is some tape and a floor lamp or some sort of light source and a big open space. So let's put this together. To get this lamp in the right spot to be our sun, I'm just going to raise it up to the eye level of the students and then use an extension cord to get it plugged in. Now that the sun is in a good position for the student's eye level, I'm going to use these instructions to place the constellations and the months around the room. Remember to place the months counterclockwise around the sun because Earth orbits counterclockwise around the sun. Each ecliptic constellation has a little note about when it's most visible, so that's the one that you would set closest to that month. So for example, February is on this side of the sun, so I will set this Leo poster on the same side as February. For the circumpolar constellations like Ursa Major, which is always visible, I like to put these on the ceiling. This can be tricky, especially when I don't want to grab a ladder, but I want to be safe. So what I do is I tape little magnets to the back and hope for the best that they'll stick on the ceiling rail. It's good enough. Now that we're all set up, we can start teaching with our celestial sphere. So one of the things I have the students start doing is model what a year is. So I might start them on January and have them just walk through what year one year is, which is one revolution around the sun. So January, February, March, April, etc. Get students comfortable with the idea of what one year is. And then I'll also walk them through what one night is. So again, this represents the sun. So we have the day-night cycle where here it is day because we're facing the sun, and now it is night because we're facing away. So starting with the basics is really helpful, just so they can acclimatize. So we might have them walk through the year, and then show me what a day is. So I would quiz them on this, like, okay, it's daytime, so we face the sun. It's nighttime, so now we face away. That's important for understanding why we see different constellations throughout the year. So for example, I would ask the students to come on up and stand on their birth month. So for myself, that is November. And when I look at the sun, this is, would be daytime, I'm looking at the sun, and I cannot see stars in the daytime sky because there's one really bright one right there. So the sun is overpowering all the other stars in the sky, so I don't see what's over there. Then I ask them to turn to night. So turning away from the sun in November, I can see the constellation right behind the camera is Taurus. So that's the constellation that's most visible because it's nighttime. I can also see Aries and Gemini and Cancer, but the one that's most visible right now is November. So this often brings forth the students' zodiac signs and their horoscopes, and I love dispelling this myth. So they'll say, Oh, but if you're born in November, aren't you a Sagittarius? Sure, but what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Sagittarius or a Gemini or a Libra? And does it really affect your life? So I have them go through this process. Turn back to the day in your month and then look out at the sun. What is the constellation you cannot see? What constellation is the sun directly in front of? So for me, looking out at the sun, what can't I see? I can't see Sagittarius because it's on the other side. So all your zodiac sign means is that's the position of the sun in front of that constellation at the time of your birth. And it's been shifting around anyway. So it really means nothing. And that's a nice way to dispel the myth of horoscopes and zodiac signs. Really, it was just a way for early astronomers to track the positions of stars and planets in the sky. That's it. It has no bearing on your daily life. From the student point of view, here they are. It's daytime looking at the sun. If they want it to be nighttime, then they need to rotate 180 degrees, and then that's the constellation they can see at night best. 
going through one year. From the student's perspective, they would walk counterclockwise around the sun because that's the direction in which Earth orbits the sun. In terms of their zodiac sign, they can stand in front of their month of birth and then look towards the sun. The sun is blocking a lot of stars because it's so bright. If we kind of peek around, what constellation is the sun blocking? Sagittarius. It's not visible in November because the sun is in front of it. So all around the room we have constellations that are best viewed at different times of year. And then of course there are constellations that are visible at all times of the year. And those are the ones that are on the ceiling. So for example here we have Ursa Major and that is always visible. Of course there are constellations that are never visible in the Northern Hemisphere like the Southern Cross. And that's because it is on the floor of the lower level of this building. It's under us, so we cannot see through the earth, which is the floor and kind of this representation. We can't see through the earth, so we'll never see those constellations. Of course, the best constellation to get is Ursa Minor because it has Polaris, the North Star. And if you can manage it, you can get the two pointer stars from Ursa Major to point towards Polaris and then students can learn how to find them in the night sky.